In this video, we'll address an extremely interesting topic, who will win the 2024 presidential election. We'll present you with amazing predictions about the electoral map of all 50 states in the United States. For all the relevant information, we suggest you pay close attention and stay until the end of the video. Today we are looking more closely at the 2024 electoral map, building on the latest poll data to better understand where Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are in their fight for the 270 electoral votes essential to securing the presidency. As we review each state, we will highlight the most competitive ones in yellow, as these could play a crucial role in deciding the end result of the election. So, let's start and see how this presidential race progresses state by state. Please subscribe to my channel. Let's start with the Western United States. First of all, we have the state of Washington, which has 12 electoral votes. Recent polls indicate that Kamala Harris has a significant advantage over Donald Trump in this state, sometimes up to 21 percentage points. Given this strong advantage, we can confidently allocate Washington's 12 electoral votes to Harris, bringing its total to 12. Then we have Oregon, which has 8 electoral votes. Here, two recent polls show that Harris leads by about 5 points. Although this advantage is lower compared to the one it has in Washington, we know that Joe Biden won Oregon by a margin of 16 points in 2020. So, we'll categorize Oregon as a Harris-leaning state, bringing its total to 20 electoral votes. Now let's move on to the state of California, which has significant weight in the election result because of its 55 electoral votes. Polls show that Harris has a big advantage in the state, with margins ranging from 25 to 31 points. Given that California is a state that has historically favored the Democratic Party, we will assign the 55 electoral votes to Harris, which increases its total to 75. Now we move into the Rocky Mountain states, starting with Idaho, which has four electoral votes. There is no recent poll data in this state, but Trump won Idaho by more than 30 points in the last two elections. Given this record, we will assign these votes to Trump, bringing his total to four. Montana, with four electoral votes, also seems to be leaning in favor of Trump. Recent polls show that Trump has a lead of between 14 and 18 points. So, we will assign you these votes which brings your total to 8. In Wyoming, which has three electoral votes, there are also no recent polls, but Trump has consistently won in this state by broad margins in the past. So, we'll allocate these votes to Trump, increasing his total to 1-1. In Utah, which has six electoral votes, polls show that Trump has a lead of between 26 and 32 points. Given this clear advantage, we will assign these votes to Trump, bringing his total to 17. Now let's focus on Colorado, which has 10 electoral votes. Polls show that Harris has a 10 to 15 point lead in this state. As Joe Biden won Colorado by a margin of 13.5 points in 2020, we will assign these 10 votes to Harris, which increases his total to 85. Finally, consider New Mexico, which has 5 electoral votes. Here, polls show that Harris has an advantage of between 6 and 11 points, so we'll assign you these votes, which brings your total to 90. Now let's move on to the Great Plains states. Let's start with North Dakota. There is no data from recent polls but as Trump has won convincingly in previous elections, we will assign him his three electoral votes, bringing his total to 20. There are no recent polls in South Dakota either, but Trump's previous victories lead us to assign him these three votes, bringing his total to 23. Nebraska is a state that divides its electoral votes by district. Current polls show that Harris leads the second district, so we will assign him one vote in that region, while Trump will receive the four votes from the other districts. This means that Harris has 91 electoral votes and Trump has 27. Next, We'll look at Kansas, which has six electoral votes. Although no poll data is available, Trump has won this state by wide margins in previous elections, so we will assign him these votes, which increases his total to 3-3. In Oklahoma, recent polls indicate that Trump leads comfortably, so we will assign him the seven electoral votes of this state, bringing his total to 40. We now turn our attention to the southern United States, a key region in this election. We started with Texas, which has 40 electoral votes. Trump leads here, but the margins are narrower ranging from 2 to 6 points. This indicates that, although Texas remains a Republican state, it is more competitive than in previous election cycles. Still, we will assign these votes to Trump, which increases his total to 80. Then there's Georgia, with 16 electoral votes. Polls show that Harris is ahead, given that Biden won the state by an adjusted margin in 2020. So, we'll assign these votes to Harris, bringing his total to 107. In Florida, a key state with 30 electoral votes, polls show that Trump is ahead, but again by narrow margins, of between 2 and 5 points. Given the unpredictable nature of this state, we will assign these votes to Trump, bringing his total to 110. We now move to the Northeast United States, starting with New Hampshire, which has 4 electoral votes. Polls show that Harris leads here, so we'll assign him these votes, bringing his total to 111.AT Vermont. Harris has a strong lead in the polls, so we'll give him his 3 electoral votes, which increases his total to 114. Connecticut has 7 electoral votes 
which historically leaned toward Democrats. We will assign these votes to Harris, which brings his total to 121. New Jersey, with 14 electoral votes, has also been a Democratic stronghold. The polls confirmed this trend, so we will give these votes to Harris, bringing its total to 135. In Delaware, with three electoral votes, Harris has constant support, so we'll assign you these votes, which increases your total to 138. Maryland has 10 electoral votes, and as Harris leads the polls, we'll assign these votes to him, bringing his total to 148. In conclusion, our analysis of the 2024 electoral map shows that competition between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump is intense. Harris currently leads with 224 electoral votes, compared to Trump's 180. In summary, the current breakdown of the 2024 electoral map reveals a highly competitive race between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Both candidates are battling fiercely for control of key states that will ultimately decide the outcome of the election. At this stage, Kamala Harris holds a narrow lead, having secured a projected 224 electoral votes. Donald Trump, on the other hand, trails with 180 electoral votes, but the race is far from over. Several swing states remain highly contested, and their outcomes could significantly shift the balance in either direction. The intense competition highlights the deep divisions within the American electorate, with each candidate striving to appeal to crucial voter blocs. As the campaign continues, both Harris and Trump will need to focus their efforts on securing these pivotal battleground states to build the momentum necessary to win the 270 electoral votes required for victory. The race is expected to tighten as Election Day approaches making the final weeks of campaigning critical for both campaigns that we have been working tirelessly to bring you the best possible information, especially for you, our beloved senior citizens. Your well-being and financial security are at the heart of everything we do, and that's why we strive to provide clear, accurate, and timely updates on pension programs and other resources that may benefit you. To continue offering this important content, we kindly invite you to subscribe to our channel. Your support is essential and by subscribing, you ensure that you never miss any of the updates that could be crucial for your pension or other benefits. Additionally, we would be incredibly grateful if you could share this video with your WhatsApp group, friends, and family members who may also need to stay informed about pension-related news. This simple act of sharing could help someone in your circle who may not have access to the latest information. Don't forget to give this video a like, as well. Your interactions, whether it's liking the video or leaving a comment, play a huge role in encouraging us to keep producing more helpful content tailored to your needs. In fact, we would love to hear from you in the comments below. Let us know where you're watching from or if there are specific topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Your feedback is invaluable, and we always look forward to reading your thoughts. Once again, we truly appreciate your time and your continued support. Thank you so much for watching, and we look forward to serving you with more useful content in the future.